Hello folks, welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Friday, May the 21st. I'm Eric Wilkinson and you very well may recognize me as the Wolfman from Mainstream Media where I talk about the economic data, the geopolitical environment, how those come in to impact the markets with some of my market analysis. I'm going to do the same thing for you folks in these market commentaries, but I'm also going to talk about the option strategies I'm implementing into my portfolio based on those assumptions I come up with in my market analysis. And for you folks, I've streamlined the process for you guys to find the optimal option strategy for any given assumption. We don't just look at a bullish assumption and pick an option strategy out of a hat. No, we aren't going straight to the long call. We look at the pricing and that determines our strategy. I show you how to spot that easily in those webinars, so please check them out at ProTraderStrategies.com. All right, so economic data. We got a lot to go over, so let's get on with it. It is the data that I like to look at probably the most out of the entire month, and it is the PMI, which is Purchasing Managers Index. Keep in mind, the purchasing managers are looking at the uh, demand for their products coming into the system, and they are projecting forward as to what they need for the inputs into the process, okay? So it is very important. Anything above 50, expansion. Anything below 50, it's contraction. And everything, believe it or not, is above 50. So let's get on with it. Uh, France, Germany, major manufacturing regions of Europe. So those are the ones we wanna key in on when we hear those manufacturing numbers. So French, man, French manufacturing, uh, flash PMI number coming in at 59, higher than the expected 58.6. The services PMI for French coming in at 56.6, expected to be 53 point even. So both those better than expected. Germany, uh, Germany flash manufacturing PMI coming in at 64. That one was the only one that was below expectations really, but uh, still well above 50 there nicely. So German services PMI coming in at 52.8, expected to be 52, so better than expected again. The broader European region outside of just Germany and France, we want to see what those are doing and the PMI for the uh, manufacturing sector coming in at 62.8, right in line with expectations. Slight revision to last month's number, but nothing really to write home about. And the services sector uh, for the European region coming in at 55.1, expected to be 52.5. Uh, and then Great Britain's manufacturing, 66.1, expected to be 66, or sorry, 60.7. And their services PMI number coming in at 61.8, uh, slightly lower than the 66, or sorry, 62.2 they were expecting. But again, in the 60s it is great to see across the pond there. And now we move over here to the United States. We get our own manufacturing uh, PMI numbers coming in at 61.5, expected to be 60.0. We are more of a service sector here in the United States as well. That number coming in at 70.1, expected to be 64.3, a revision to last month's number up by just better than a percentage point, point and a half maybe. But that headline number 70, that's the biggest number I can see going back probably the last 15 years. Uh, so just, knocking it out of the park. Existing home sales though, the one number that kind of came in through a wet blanket on everything, coming in at 5,850,000, expected to be 6,900,000. Uh, so, or sorry, 6,090,000. So just slightly more than 6 million. Uh, that number coming in a little bit lower, uh, probably going to cause a little bit of angst. We're seeing lumber prices really come off though, and all of these inputs going into the home prices uh, or into the home building. So that's good to see. We want to see those prices come down a little bit, especially if we start to see interest rates go higher because as interest rates go higher, the value of that home could start to dwindle a little bit as people aren't able to afford as much of a home as they once were. All right, so markets. Crude oil moving higher by about $2 today, back above that 50-day simple moving average. Yesterday, we settled right on that Fibonacci, and I thought we were going to break below it today, but it is a reversal there. And Bitcoin sliding after yesterday was holding some weight. It looked like we were going to get a little bit of a bounce today, but now we're settling down and going below this 50 Fibonacci. And I think that if we get below that, we are going to retest that 30 thousand handle the 29 handle just below that remember we came just shy of that 
uh, a couple of days ago, that might need to be retested. And the market is kind of eyeballing that, especially if we get a settlement below this 50 Fibonacci. It's really going to be uh, a little bit heavy as those diamonds hands may have gotten the retailers to come in and throw more money at this as the institutional were selling. Remember, I talked about this. We talked about that first institutional selling, then you get the retail selling. Well, when we got that tweet, what did that get an influx of more of the Reddit traders or the Robinhood traders coming into this market and giving it some buoyancy? Now we're seeing some weakness as uh, that, that buying pressure may be ebbing a little bit. Um, all right, gold futures just slightly off on the day uh, where we're getting the bonds moving just slightly higher on the day. Mixed bag really across the board here in the equities. As we can see, the NASDAQ yesterday got above that 50-day simple moving average and above this trend line that we saw from uh, 2017. Now we're settling right on top of that below the 50-day simple moving average, but on top of that trend line, at least as of now, um, we're seeing this rotation out of some of these tech and into some more blue chip names uh, heading into the weekend, but seeing some weakness there in the NASDAQ. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average up almost 250 points on the day, just off the highs. We were up close to 250, um, but maybe a little bit of profit taking here heading into the lunchtime in New York, but still seeing some strength there in the Dow Jones, E-mini S&Ps, a little bit weakness here in the later parts of the afternoon, but still in positive territory here. Uh, you can see overnight was relatively flat coming into the day session off that economic data that we saw across the pond. And here in the United States, we got a bit of a boost here. Could be those housing numbers are uh, causing a little bit of worry and maybe some pullback here based on some of that. Let's talk about some trades that I've got going on here. And these are my May trades that didn't work out and are basically going to expire worthless. An Activision I had on the May bought the 100 calls in there for $4.25. Those are obviously below where the underlying, uh, or sorry, above where the underlying is currently trading, $5 lower. Do I want to buy Activision at 100 with those calls? Do I want to exercise my right but my not my obligation no i don't want to exercise my right or my obligation i'm going to let that expire worthless uh in the activision there similar uh situation here in kroger never got that real bounce we're just slightly um off of that or actually that that, that off of that bounce here, I was expecting more of a sell-off once we got below this 50-day simple moving average in Kroger and never really got that follow-through. Yesterday got a bit of a bounce here and um, confirmation today. So it's not really working out here. And I had on the 35 puts in May uh, that I paid 48 cents for. Uh, it was looking pretty good yesterday. Obviously that bounce at the end of the day, uh, all that gamma, everything else came out of it. And those are basically worthless. And finally, Lulu is something that was looking pretty good here. Um, looking at the end of the day yesterday, just getting close to that settlement of 320, but today seeing a lot of weakness here. So I had in an order this morning to try and get out of that, but I've been chasing this as the market's gotten weak. I think we're gonna hang out here, at least in and around this point of control. So what I'm gonna do with this trade is take off the, um, the short puts, because they're going to get put to me anyway at 320, I'm going to take that off for a loss. I'm going to go out there in the open market and buy Lulu sometime today. They're going to offset the puts. Are, the loss in the puts is going to offset uh, my stock purchase. So really, I'm going to be looking at it like I am long at 320 and trying to load my overall cost basis and stay mechanical from that level. All right. So that's how I'm going to play this. I'm not going to go through the exercise process. Uh, I got lucky enough last night that we got close enough to that, that nobody really uh, jumped on putting that to me with only a couple of pennies away. But uh, today, it going into settlement, I will be forced assignment on um, on Lulu if I don't do anything and the cost of that is a lot more expensive than just going out there and doing the process that I'm talking about. Get out of the puts, buy the stock and just kind of look at it like my cost basis is higher than where it's going to show in my p and That makes any sense. All right. Hopefully so. All right. That's all I got for you guys. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Uh, one last thing, if you enjoyed anything 
in this and took anything away, please smash that like button. It really does help us out. And if you don't smash that, take that. <laughs> All right, y'all. Have a good one. Take care.